Okay, so I am way overdue for making an, a new video. Um, it looks like I did, in fact, have the coronavirus last month, and that's why I had so little energy for so long. So about a week ago, I started to get some of my energy back. So I've been out at my other house doing some work out there, and I, I actually did a little bit of a video on the house itself. Unfortunately, it's kind of grainy, kind of crummy, so it's really may not be worth watching, but I'm going to upload it after I get done making this video. So, anyways, I've got a few little bullet points that I wanted to hit real quick. The first up is a follow-up on this. <clears throat> that I should have done two weeks ago. So those are the drill press wheels that I was uh, did in my last video, or at least I think it was my last video. Um, and I think you can kind of see, <clears throat> see how that tube is cocked off on an angle to attach to the base that is why I had to do the 77 degree hole uh, through the tubing for the for the wheels. So it's not pretty, but it is it is effective. Didn't really do a great job on getting my holes <laughs> aligned as well as I would like to on the on the base itself, but. It sure does make it easy to move this thing around now. So, obviously, you have to exercise a certain degree of care when dealing with a machine that's top-heavy, but for the obstacles I deal with in the garage, I'd say it's worth the risk, in, in my opinion. So, that is the first order of business. The second order of business is bandsaw wheels um, <clears throat> so I was gri griping and complaining about how costly uh, the urethane belts are for these bandsaws <clears throat> so what I wound up doing and I don't know if this is going to work or not I've got other ideas to try in the future if this doesn't pan out but you can see I've got what is nothing more than a strip of rubber glued on to the the bandsaw tires. So I have I've had these both glued up for oh geez the past couple weeks or so and I haven't gotten around to giving them a test drive yet to see how they're gonna work out but I'll see if I can find the rubber that I got. I'm planning on doing it to this bandsaw as well but this was just I think this was like $13 on Amazon. It's nothing more than a one inch wide strip of rubber that's a sixteenth of an inch thick. I split it down the middle. Would have liked to have had it a little bit more than a half inch wide for these guys, but considering the fact I wasn't sure how well this was going to work, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it, but hopefully in a future video I will get these smaller wheels on the Bainbridge and see how they hold up. That's what these uh, that's what these wheels are for. Is they're for this metal cutting Bainbridge saw that's right there, basically underneath the drill press. So that's another tool that's going to go outside in the future. Um, let's see what else. Let's do the the blower. So. I think the guy's name, Upstairs Machine Shop, I believe, is the guy's name. I kept seeing him have one of these things in his shop over and over again in videos that he was doing in the past. And I thought, wow, I have got to have one of those. So I figured while I had a little theoretical immunity, I would go ahead and go to Home Depot and pick one of these things up. And sure enough, these things, I mean, they blow up a storm, quite literally. 
I wasn't sure how it would work as far as um, trying to move metal chips and whatnot, but oh man, it's been just terrific. Probably not so much if it was bogged down with a bunch of oil, but So considering the fact that most times I have my air compressors shut off, this is a very simple solution to get chips and dust off of things. Um, the shaper cover. Um, so I started to do some welding on one of the shaper covers. <clears throat> as I was starting to get my energy back, so I haven't gotten too far on it yet. But, this is what it's going to be. I have to take some more cuts off of certain areas strategically, and I need to cut in the decorative parts, and obviously I need to finish welding these and basically hammer and dolly these into a, a bit of a radius. Um, and then there's the pieces cut out for the other one, but as you can see with the, the rust on this, it's been sitting for, there again, a week or two. Um, on and on and on. So one of the things, well, one of the upcoming things that I need to do is make one of these out of metal. And I also need to make a couple of lock handles for the Cochrane Bly mill. So, considering how hideously this radius, <laughs> or this ball is on this, I thought, well, I need a radius turning tool. So, I've looked at several different ideas from other people, and it kind of dawned on me that I want something a little bit different. So what I'm anticipating right now is I've seen people use the actual compound slide as their radius turning attachment. So I'm going to base it off of that, but I'm going to try and do something a little bit different. I'm hoping, I think I can make a, basically a, a T-nut that fits into the, Oh, fits into the compound rest and clamps in a tangent tangential tool bit. Obviously not nearly this tall, but what I'm thinking is I'll probably go with quarter inch, uh, quarter inch by quarter inch square stuff to start with. And I'm probably going to simply just stick it straight up for now because I don't know just exactly how well this is going to work. In a perfect world, obviously, I would angle it in a few degrees. But like I said, since this is experimental, and I'm still a little bit unsure of my skill level, I'm going to try it like that first. So basically, imagine this cut into two pieces with a diamond-shaped hole uh, slotted into the middle of it and then bolts uh allen headed cap screws uh clamping one side to the other and then screws uh grub screws going up and down that will kind of clamp it in place that way so we'll see that is it's probably going to be a couple of months yet before I get back to any serious amount of videos out here in the garage. So I figured I would kind of try to hit the highlights now because I doubt anybody's really going to want to see much of the nonsense that's going on out at the house. Let's see, what else was there? The shaper cut. Oh, grinder build. The grinder build. Yeah, I think that's the last thing. Um, just one metal guy, I think that's his name. He was doing a resurrection of a grinder type setup like this, if I remember correctly, a while back. And it dawned on me that since I had one also, 
I could put it to use. The catch is I have some grinding wheels that take a different thread, that have a different internal thread than what these guys have. So after watching just one metal guy, I thought to myself, well, if he can make an arbor for one of those, surely I can too. So that is probably going to be on the list also in the mm, semi-distant future. Um... I, unfortunately, I don't think I have any of the grinding wheels out here to show you. But uh, they might be slower speed grinding wheels. They're, they're not, they're kind of cupped, but they're not cupped on an angle, if that makes any sense. So, anyway, so there'll, there'll be more information on those in the future, but that's not really the highest priority project that I've got coming up the next high priority thing is going to probably be this uh, radius turning setup so that's why I had ordered from Amazon yet again a set of quarter 20 cap screws so I've got a few different sizes to play with and hopefully I, sh I should be able to find some in there that suit my needs that are small enough or short enough to be able to pull off this particular build. So anyways, I know it's kind of a dull video, nothing that impressive. And if anybody's really super bored, you might high, or might consider fast forwarding through part of the video I upload after this. Otherwise, it's not going to break my heart if you skip it entirely because it's going to be kind of dull. So, hopefully, till later.